In this video, I'll guide you step by step on setting up EVNG Community Edition directly on your server. Now, in my case, it's a Dell PowerEdge 3360 server. We'll also explore why using bare metal could significantly improve your lab performance compared to your virtualization setup with a VMware. Before we jump into this setup, let's answer the critical question. Why use bare metal? See, here's the deal. While running EVNG on VMware might seem convenient, and honestly it is, installing directly onto the bare metal offers major performance advantages. You'll eliminate any overhead from the hypervisor, gain much more resources for your labs, and achieve smoother operations for large, complex network simulations. Now, simply put, bare metal means speed, stability, and maximize efficiency for your any networking projects that you'll have. The content of this video is going to be all step by step. Step one will be preparation, in which we prepare the actual server. In my case, as I said, it's a Dell Power Edge 3360 server. Ensure you're backed up your critical data if it's an in use server. And then once it's completely wiped off, you'll need the EVNG ISO file and a bootable USB stick ready. Now, step two is you go into the BIOS configuration, boot your server, enter into the BIOS, set up the boot sequence to prioritize the USB drive. While you're here, double check the virtualization support is enabled as well. Now, step three is actually now installing the EVNG. You insert your USB stick, you reboot your server, follow the EVNG installation wizard, and the installer is straightforward. Just follow the prompts very carefully. Network configuration, next up, when you set up the things, make sure that you're having a, either a static IP or DHCP, have that in plan before. Ensure your settings match your lab environment and your needs. Finalizing the installation is the last step. After the installation is done, Remove the USB stick, reboot your server, log in with your credentials that you set up or you just use default, launch your browser, enter your server's IP address, and voila, the EVNG Community Edition is ready on bare metal. Okay, now you can take a look at a cookbook that you can download from EVNG. I'll just search it for bare so I can understand what kind of setup do I need for a bare metal server. And that will just walk you through some of the stuff that they have. Uh, but again, in this video, I'll walk you through everything anyways. But it's not a bad idea to have that cookbook side by side just in case you get stuck in your personal installation. So now let's look at the files that you would need in order to uh, download all this, right? So we need the, that's the ISO, obviously, the cookbook. And then another software that you need is to create that USB drive. So that's where you go and download your EVNG. Make sure you're looking at the community edition and uh, because there are two right so we have to always look at the community edition that's the free one if you want to go for the pro one which is paid that's up to you and then you go over here to download click on download that's how you again depending on what machine you're using windows i have windows so i'll download the windows installation and then that's about it once you have the software up and running basically it's looking for two things one is your iso that you downloaded with evng community edition and so basically just point it out there. And the second thing is the USB drive. And in my case, it's an eight gig drive, which is good enough. And you hit flash and then pretty much you wait. It does give you like little uh, ETA time. It will say starting here. And after a few minutes, it will start telling you how much time does it need. In my case, it was selling me about 12 minutes as an ETA. So you have an idea of how long it's gonna take. And once it's all done, it will say completed. So I'll quickly first forward it to that. Once it says completed, you can eject your USB drive. This is basically ready now to plug into your server, to boot your server from this USB, to install EVNG directly onto the server. Now I'm turning on my Dell server, as you see here. The screen is a little shaky because I'm holding a camera and trying to record the screen for you, to, just to show you what I see. The idea here is there is once I have this up and running, I should be able to do two things. One is to make sure that there is virtualization that has been enabled. In this case, it is already enabled. And the second thing you want to make sure is that you're able to boot from the USB drive that you have. Now that's important is because that's what's going to make sure that you're able to boot up your system using the USB drive and actually install EVNG directly on it. There might be some view settings that you might see, but those two are the most important ones that you should be looking at. Your options might marry because uh, you might have a different server. This is the Dell server, as I mentioned. Once you've done these two settings, you're gonna go ahead and save that to make sure that the two settings that you just did are saved once you've done, and then you save it and you make sure that it reboots again. Now, this time when it reboots, it's gonna start installing it from the USB drive. So you'll see that it has started the installation right now. And you'll see the screen moving a little bit just that's because my hand is a little shaky when i'm trying to record this but you see the idea that 
these are the options I have and the installation begins. Installation is actually pretty easy. I must say it's pretty straightforward, much faster as well as compared to the installing a DVNG on the VMware. It just goes through the motions. As I said, nothing very hard here. It's pretty much if you have to go through next, next, it will go through. You can always keep that cookbook document open that I showed you before that just walks you through everything. Just some more settings here. And as you mentioned, that's going on. We'll ask you for the language. Sure. English here is what I'm selecting. Continue. Once I've done that, the, that's the keyboard option here as well. Uh, so picking up that keyboard option and then the continue. So just the down arrow to continue and the installation continues. And we'll let that run. So I'm just going to skip through some part of it. So you don't have to watch me go through these steps, but you get the point. You don't have to intervene here. Once all it's done, you'll see the logo show up like this. Once the logo show up, that means you're making good progress. It's going to ask you for the login here, which is usually going to be root. And if you're not changed it, the default is EVE. Once you're in, you will see the actual IP address, which is in my case, it is 192.168.100.44. That's DHCP what I got. Once I know my IP, all I need to do is open up a browser, type that IP in. It is 192.168.100.44 is what we saw. Uh, make sure it's HTTP. Hit enter and that's it. I can log in now. Login here is admin. And actually that EVNG, I always uh, keep hitting root here, but it's actually admin and then EVE. And then once you do that, you're in the EVNG. And that's where you can start working on your labs now. In here you can add a folder if you like. You can just call it my first lab on the new Dell server. And create a new lab and then I can start pulling in nodes if I want. And if you want to know a little bit more about how to add folders and all that good stuff, I have some more um, videos on the channel that will walk you through all that. So feel free to watch that if you like. But for now, I'm just renaming that. And that's it. I'm on the actual thing. You can see the, the panel on the left. And now I can start adding nodes if I like. And best way to do that is actually to go back on the main page, do a right click and then click on node. One thing that you'll notice right now is I don't have anything, any images imported. So that's the reason you'll see everything is grayed out, except you might just have the VPC option. That's just that comes with it. Other than that, this is where you have to upload them. So here I'm just uh, dragging and dropping all the images that I had. And if you want to understand how I did that, again, there is another video that walks you through the full EVNG, which is about a 30 minutes video that that's exactly what this is. I am using WinSCP to just upload all the images into the right folders. Again, the naming conventions and the folders are important. So we got to keep a track on that. This is just dropping them there. Once you have the images, you can again re-log in. One thing I did actually at the past is I also changed the IP of my server from 44 to 48. So I have to go 192.168.100.48 just to keep it a static IP in my lab. And now this time when I go on right click, I won't want to save any password, so cancel that. Right click nodes, and now you'll see that I have a whole bunch of images that are blue. So the blue things here, which really means are the ones that I have. So I can actually start dragging and dropping them from here to create a lab and start labbing at this point. Right, so just has a different option for uh, FortiGate here. For example, I can pick up the right icon and I'm actually in the things now, right? So I can maybe drop in some more stuff here if I like, like a switch. For that switch, I can also pick up different options. Let's see which switch do I like to pick up here. Um, too many options, right? So it gets confusing sometimes, which one do I wanna pick? But usually I plan these things beforehand when I start working. And then once I've done that, Let's see, okay, what about this one here? A lot of options from icons perspective. Hit okay. Uh, let's 
Let's see if I can find a switch here. One thing great, uh, great about EVNG is it just gives you so many options. So as I said, you got to get planned first. And once you're used to it, then it's a little more easier. And now I can start connecting these things from... And remember one thing, once you turn on the device, uh, then you won't be able to have the connection. So connection has to be done before, before you actually start connecting. Uh, so keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, and this is where your network is. So how do you log into certain boxes again there are more videos on the channel that talks about all that so i'm going to connect that to the 40 gate so that's how i'll be logging on to the 40 gate actually so which port you want to use you can choose different ones once you design which one do you want and that's about it and now i can actually start turning things on and successfully if you notice one thing they're they're actually you know starting pretty fast uh, also you'll notice that by default it evng comes with a putty but i'm also using secure crt which is i find it a little more interesting because i have some color coding done it's literally uh, easy on eyes i can change the font have a little more color and background options one more specific video was just created just to uh, use secure crt with your evng setup so again if that's something that you like to do so feel free to watch that video as well that will help you through all that. So right now, if you notice, I am in my Fortinet switch and I'm able to log in and I can put some commands in and that's it, we're good. So to quickly recap, bare metal installation of EVNG often is unmatched performance with resource efficiency as compared to virtualization. Now, in my case, my Dell Power Edge is now a powerful dedicated lab environment designated to handle even the most demanding network simulation. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Until next time, happy labbing. Bye for now.